The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, my name is Julian Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Demystifying Digital Transformation of Accounts Receivable, presented by Matt Shanahan of Lockstep. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our one survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools, and support whenever you need it. We've invited Lockstep here today because they are the industry experts on AR automation. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels, so we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Matt. Thanks, Julian, and thank you everybody for attending today. So as Julian indicated, my name is Matt Shanahan. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Lockstep. Um, and in that role, one, one of the things I do is I host roundtable discussions with our customers to listen to what they're saying about the current environment. And one of the big discussions that has come up this year is really about digital transformation. Um, and you know, people are looking at the situation saying, in the age of COVID, how do I switch from maybe turning off those uh, paper processes and getting much more digital and figuring out how can I improve by adopting digital throughout my entire accounts receivable process. And so through those discussions, we've developed a whole set of best practices by you know, kind of trial and erroring uh, with customers to figure out how to best do this. Before doing that, I'll just set some context. Um, Lockstep makes a product called Anytime Collect, and it basically helps companies collect cash faster. And it does that really in five specific ways. One, it's a cloud-based solution, so it supports a remote work environment. We also automate customer communications around the aging of invoices. So as things come due, reminders are sent out or dunning, any of that kind of information. There's a customer self-service component, so somebody can go online to a portal and look at their statement, make payments, those kinds of things. So customers are able to go in, and rather than doing an email or call, able to do it right there. There's collections activity management, so moving out of Outlook and personal inboxes and having a shared workspace. Um, the teams can work together to you know, decide who to follow up with in terms of which customers and which invoices might need a phone call or an email. And then forecasting and reporting, being able, able to predict when cash is going to come in, or to be able to report on how things are performing operationally. We serve a lot of great brands um, and we have you know, kind of key integrations. So certainly in the Sage ecosystem, but Sage Intact, Sage 100, all of those integrations are cornerstone to what we do. So let's get into our topic. You know, currently cash flow has really bubbled to the top as a priority. In a recent Deloitte survey, they reported a large majority of CFOs said one of the most important roles has been managing cash and liquidity. And that's really driven by the pandemic. Uh, you know, making sure that you have cash in the door is one of the most important ways to stay in business because the number one reason businesses fail is a cash flow issue. But the pandemic has exposed a lot of cash traps in accounts receivable, things that slow that cash inflow. And those cash traps are creating problems to, for organizations. So they're trying to figure out how do I reduce those gaps in time or the delay associated with cash inflows. Uh, one of the first ones to think about is just the current state of accounts receivable. When you look at um, the amount of paper, for instance, that exists, um, in the US, at least 37% of invoices 
are sent out as paper. Um, I talked to an analyst last week, and they indicated that it's probably closer to 50%. So if you think about it, if you send a paper invoice, you're already slowing down your cash flow because the most likely response from your customer is also going to be a paper check. And that paper flowing through the mail is just a very slow process. Um, and that's what we think of as a cash trap. Every single one of those paper invoices is a cash trap. So digital transformation is all about how do you eliminate these cash traps? And there's three specific things to think about. One is you want to eliminate paper. The second that I mentioned a little bit earlier is to eliminate personal inboxes. So personal inboxes are things that, you know, as an individual, and I'm using Outlook, I've got my own personal inbox and I'm managing, you know, um, AR collections through that. And the final one is less um, apparent is to eliminate attachments. And we'll talk about, you know, all these PDF attachments that are going out in email and how that actually creates a cash trap for you. So let's look at each of those phases. Um, the first one we'll talk about is to eliminate paper. And as I mentioned, it's hard to believe that in today's day and age, 40% of invoices are still going out as paper. Because, you know, quite frankly, who wants paper? It's expensive. You know, who wants to spend money on paper, filing cabinets, envelopes, ink, printers, postage, and storage? One of our customers told us right now, one of the biggest problems with paper invoices is with people working remotely, their printers aren't fast enough at home. So they just can't even print quickly enough. Uh, and then they run out of ink and it's much more expensive to print at home. So remote work has really kind of exposed this cash trap. Uh, and let's face it, it's slow. It adds days and weeks to invoicing and payment workflow. Um, it's more work. You know, you have to open envelopes, find the right folder, filing cabinet. Um, you can't have paper and be remote. It's really kind of an office anchor. When everyone that isn't under the same roof, you know, it's hand, you can't hand off documents to each other. They're hard to scan, that, all of those things. And it's really hard to automate. So these are all the things that get into um, paper as being an issue. So here's a quick poll question that we'd like to you know, put out to the attendees. You know, what percentage of your invoices are currently sent as paper? either zero to 10%, 10 to 20%, uh, 20 to 40, um, or 40% 40 or more. Great, we encourage you to contribute. We'll give it just a second more. All right, well, thank you. So uh, there was a, there was about 25% that said 10 to 20%. Um, and then there was, you know, just one respondent said 40% or more. So it's interesting to see that, you know, there is a spread. Uh, it still does exist. And, you know, it's one of the issues to get resolved. So one strategy is to really think about replacing paper with email. Um, every sort of modern ERP will have an ability to email out uh, to an accounts payable department. And the power of that is, is really clear. We just talked about the fact that you can accelerate your DSO and lower your cost. Um, if we go further into the power of an email address, one of the things is it's universally unique identifier of the accounts payable department. Um, and that's an important aspect. Uh, for you, it actually allows you to do things like uh, master data cleanup and some other things to, to manage that customer or customer record. It's also ubiquitous communication. Every single um, AP department, every customer in the world has an email address. So this is something that is definitely open and easy to access. And the third thing is it really gets you to enable automation. You know, there's a lot of ways you can automatically generate emails. You can actually capture those emails automatically and process them. It's an important, you know, step in the automation uh, journey. So let's look at the second um, element. You know, the second thing to look at is eliminate the use of personal inboxes. So you can see that 40% of these communications uh, that are going back and forth for invoicing really are happening in email. 
And when we've done polls uh, and looked at how that is structured, this is the way it looks in most accounting departments today. So there will be, you know, some generic, you know, um, address for accounts payable. So it might say accounting at company.com or accounts payable at company.com. And that's usually either a shared inbox or distribution list. And what happens then is people take that, you know, the AP personnel will take it out of the shared inbox and bring it into their own personal inbox, right? And be able to start working through it that way. And they start replying and sending out of their own personal inboxes. And the challenge, you know, when you look at that is, you know, we'll look at some of those challenges in a second, but over 90% of companies we've surveyed run their departments this way. So it's a very common practice. Um, but the challenges are really this, right? If you think about personal inboxes or cash traps, if a response is sent to a personal inbox, the conversation is now going to be stuck in that information black hole. You know, if a person's out of the office as a result of that or busy on another project, that conversation can stall. It's not visible to anybody else on the team, right? So when we think about um, that issue, it suddenly becomes a bottleneck, right? And of course, because you have multiple personal inboxes, that means there's more potential for bottlenecks. You have more bottlenecks. And what if somebody leaves the company and, you know, the vendor is still, you know, you're, you as a vendor are still sending you know, things that way, um, that means things are going through the cracks, right? They're dropping through it. You know, nobody's going to follow up on that because the person who has that inbox is no longer looking at it. And all of this can lead to fire drills, right? So guess what happens? Something will get escalated because it's stuck in the black hole, bottlenecked or lost in a crack. At some point, it's going to become a fire drill and then now you're reacting. And this is a typical dynamic. Um, and that's because, you know, these personal inboxes were never designed for the accounting process. You know, there's no integrate Outlook and Gmail don't integrate with, you know, Sage, right? There's no automation in them to handle, you know, mail merging of data into emails or archiving data according to customer record. As we talked about, there's no visibility. You can't search across all of these. And it's certainly not controlled. You can't have um, specific business rules on there driving this. Um, so we'd like to do a poll question. You know, we talked about the fact that 90% of people um, are using Outlook. I'd like to see uh, what you're using. Okay, we'll give it just a second more. Awesome. So yes, we're seeing something very similar. You know, um, in this case, just based on our demographic here, it looks like about 78% of people are using either Outlook or Gmail to do this today. So thank you for your participation. So one strategy then is to think about how do you replace personal inboxes with a shared workspace? Um, one of the things that a shared workspace should have is this ability to work as a team together, right? So assigning activities to people. So this email gets assigned to you. It has tracking and follow-up so that you know what happens. You can search across it. You can find it. Um, there's automation in there to help you process that email. And of course, you would want to have activity reporting. What's everybody on the team doing? And let's look at the third element, um, eliminating attachments. As you can see in this, um, in this study, 12% of invoices are actually processed through a portal. You know, that's a pretty low percentage. Um, and you know, the question is, how, how can you drive more self-service along those lines? How could you get more payments done online? The reason self-service portals fail, the reason that's so low, when we think about adoption, one of the big factors is nobody really wants, you know, another password, right? So when, you, when you're using portals, a lot of times there's low adoption because it's extra work for your trading partners or your customers see it as, you know, harder to do than email itself. Another reason is onboarding can actually be onerous, right? So somebody's got to register for the, for the um, access, they have to wait to be admitted, then they have to learn how to use the app. Those can be very sort of 
you know, difficult thing. And then there's support overhead. Your team suddenly is now having to support what customers are doing online. And that can be an issue because then it's taking away from other activities they need to be able to do. And ultimately, you know, what's in it for your customers? Why, do, why should they see this as valuable? Because um, they'll only use it if they can see that there's clear value for them. And that's one of the key things then when you think about this whole issue on attachments. Self-service can solve problems for both yourself and your customers. Because attachments are sort of a cash trap for both people. Uh, for example, you know, as a when event when you're trying to onboard a customer, um, you send a PDF and has, it has to be filled out, and your customer then has to you know attach a W9 or, or you, know, you have to share your W9, and this all creates this form filling and attachments and sending back and forth. So how can you make that whole experience easier? Uh, what not only for onboarding, but things like you know, presentment, disputes, et cetera, take it out of the attachments and, and rekeying of entry and put it all online. And so one of the things to think about is this notion that um, PDF attachments can be replaced with online forms. And those online forms can actually be delivered using what's called the uh, magic link. Emails with magic links are really powerful because they provide secure access to an online resource like, you know, like a statement or an ability to pay, et cetera. But it's like a one-time password. So it's secure, it's a hyperlink. Nobody has to remember a password. They don't have to set up an account. They're able to gain access to the in information online rather than having to deal with an attachment. So those are the three sort of main ways that you think about transforming your accounts receivable process into a digital experience. You know, that first step is, you know, first of all, get rid of the paper, make it email. The second step is to work as a team, you know, in a collaborative workspace. And the third is to replace all those attachments and data entry with online forms that are accessible by your, from your, for your customers via magic link. And then let's talk about that adoption issue, right? So we mentioned that adoption is critical success factor to digital transformation. And what we mean by adoption is what's the number percentage of customers that you have that are engaging you online and digitally? And then on their usage, does it become their preferred channel? So they stop emailing you and really focus on leveraging maybe an in, in online customer self-service? Um, and does that frequency go up? Because ultimately, if you're able to do that, you can reduce your DSO. You can actually increase customer satisfaction. I know for me personally, I would rather go online and you know, get information I need than do an email or make a phone call to get the information I need. And if that's happening, you're actually reducing your own workload, um, which lets you focus on higher priority things. What we do at, um, at uh, Lockstep in terms of our customers is help them on what we call an adoption roadmap. There's a process by making adoption happen. And it's interesting, accounting departments have never had to think about running a marketing campaign, but that's ultimately what you need to do in order to drive adoption of digital. You need to really think about kind of launching the capability and promoting that. And so that's why, you know, I mentioned that kind of round table that, that we do with our customers. We develop this whole methodology with, in conjunction with them to deal with these issues of how you can take, you know, custom, you know, your digital experience and then get customers to actually adopt that. So in the, in the beginning, one of the things that you do is really identify your stakeholders, figure out your best, you know, what are the business drivers that are going to make this happen? Um, you actually launch a campaign, you know, to collect emails that you might be missing. You know, so those paper invoices probably are missing invoice or missing emails. So how do you collect those? Then you think about kind of getting your staff ready to be able to do this um, and then launch a promotional campaign. After that, you really monitor the adoption and think about, okay, getting feedback from customers. What do they like? What do they not like? and then adjust based on the, on the data you get back. 
So measuring baseline, um, these can be a lot of the business drivers. You can, you know, by driving digital, we talked about uh, the paper costs. Uh, one organization that we worked with was sending out 4,600 statements per month. They would hold a folding party where the 18 people would spend all day folding statements, stuffing envelopes, putting on postage, everything else on 4,600. You can imagine that's a very expensive operation. And now they're down to only doing 300 per month as paper. The rest has gone digital. It's a big impact. Uh, you can also think about then deflecting those inbound inquiries, right? So you're freeing up staff time to work on other things. Um, accelerating payments, which lowers your DSO, right? So all of these can be critical to what you want to define success as. So that's one of the things that um, that's done is to, you know, set that baseline up front and then define how you're going to get successful. As I mentioned, uh, we go, when we go into organizations, we typically see anywhere from 30 to 70% of the customer email addresses as being unknown or wrong. And when I say wrong, they have an email address, but it's not actually to the accounts payable department. It might be to the person who actually bought the, you know, the, the product. And so you want to make sure that it's getting directly to the accounts payable department. And so how do you fix that problem? Well, one of the things that is possible is you can harvest those emails by sending a direct mail to each customer, asking them to register online to make that happen. Um, you can actually, on the if you're doing paper statements or paper invoices, you can have little inserts on each one of those going out. So you make a, a promotional thing to really get people to drive adoption. And they can go to an online form. They can put in their customer ID that's on the invoice or statement. Um, and then register their email address. And we found this to be incredibly effective. Um, if you if you tried to collect, you know, call people up and get their email address, on average, we were hearing it takes anywhere from, you know, 30 minutes to an hour per email address you're trying to collect. And if you have thousands to do, it's a daunting, if not impossible process. This makes it very simple uh, and very easy to do. The next is you wanna think about you know, how do you onboard digitally? So any net new customer that you bring on now, don't send them a PDF where they then enter all the data into the PDF form that they email back to you that then you have to hand enter into your accounting system. You know, send them a magic link to an onboarding form. So rather than PDFs, it's gonna be online where they can fill that profile out uh, and save it. And as soon as they save it, it's updated into your accounting system and you're ready to go. So again, it's one of these things where it can save you a ton of time. Also collects you know, key information if there's a tax exemption certificate. Um, and when they're done filling that out, the thing that happens immediately after that is sharing your W-9 and other associated information with them. So they get a, a, a link to that information that's always kept up to date. Then, you know, we talked about modifying your communications. Um, don't have attachments in there anymore. Uh, have those magic links and buttons that give people access to an online version of what used to be a PDF. Um, it's more convenient for them. They can have that, that full access. It creates an archive online that they can always go back to. It's a really powerful way that starts to motivate people to say, okay, I'm just going to use the online forms. And then also provide, you know, magic link access to statements and payments, um, being able to generate a dispute. All of that should be able to be done, you know, uh, immediately online. So that's sort of the technology enablement sort of part of it, along with that harvesting campaign. In addition to that, you want to think about promoting broadly the availability of this new digital um, experience. So you want announcement emails to go out. Uh, think about having an explainer video up, you know, that sells the benefit. Why, why should you use this? Um, we talked about a statement insert, updating corporate voicemails. I don't know if you've ever been on hold where it says, oh, you know, if you'd like your question answered faster, visit us online. Same sort of thing of being able to update the um, greetings inside the accounting department so people think about using that online. Um, certainly on the corporate website, making sure there's a link there that they can go follow to gain access. Um, and then in your email signatures. So it's this whole way of getting your customers accustomed to actually going online 
in you know engaging you that way. From there, you want we talked about being able to monitor adoption. You know, so how many how many people came to the you know customer self service today? How many people made payments? Um, you know, what are your customers doing? So think of it as almost Google Analytics for your digital. Um, it's a way that you can see are we getting adoption and then measure how did that impact those business metrics that you wanted to achieve. Obviously, getting feedback is super important. So, you know, you want to figure out what else you might want to do. Um, are, is this, you know, what do customers like? What do they not like? How can you improve? And it's really easy to, to do that through something like a survey monkey and get feedback very quickly. So that gave you a sense of, you know, kind of this adoption roadmap of being able to go from where you are today to having a, a completely transformed digital experience for accounts receivable with your customers. Um, and what we've seen is that, you know, not only does it include, improve the business metrics that you have, but it also really makes the relationship with customers much stronger. They appreciate the ease of business that you're doing with them and the uh, convenience that it is for them. So that's digital transfer transformation demystified. It's three simple, pretty simple steps, but it has a powerful impact. So again, you're just replacing paper with email communication. Then you're replacing those Outlook and Gmail personal inboxes with a shared workspace that lets teams work together um, and, and, and be able to manage you know, the workload. And then you're replacing attachments with online access, right? So you're saying, look, I'm not going to email you PDF. I'm going to give you a link that'll get you to everything you need online and you don't need to use a password to get. The business case for digital transformation is compelling. Uh, we typically show a 10x ROI on that. That comes from increased cash flow, which is working capital, freeing up staff time to focus on other things. Um, and ultimately, we talked about some of the expense around paper, et cetera. So there's a really compelling business case to do that. And, you know, think about starting your digital transformation now. Yeah, certainly contact your SWK account manager for more information. Also, uh, visit the SWK website uh, to, for information about Anytime Collect. And certainly um, go to anytimecollect.com for uh, information as well. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Matt. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. And we'll give that a minute in case any come through. And just a reminder, everyone, we do have a subject matter expert here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. We do have a few that came through during the presentation, Matt. First being, where do online payments come into play? So online, as I mentioned, all the communications that you send out about invoice presentment, invoice reminders, et cetera, should go back to that customer self-service portal. Um, in there, uh, you would have the ability to pay right through the, you know, through the portal. And, you know, the power of that is obviously it's much faster than going through the mail. So that's great. Uh, and then the automation. I mean, you actually get automated cash application typically when you're doing that. So there's a lot of benefits to that. And, and so that's typically what, how those all tie together. We have another. Can you quantify some example benefits? Yeah. So as I, as I mentioned, just I'll use the, the example uh, for that folding party example. That company had the 46, um, 4,600 statements per month. When we did the postage and paper and personnel time that went into it, uh, that turned out to be $70,000 of savings just on that alone. Not in, you know, this doesn't get into the DSO and other things, um, but just on that, that piece alone was $70,000 of savings. We have another. What digital adoption levels should someone expect? It certainly will vary. Um, you know, we, what we see is sort of the bare minimum bar that you're looking for is at least half your customer base going digital. Uh, that's, that has a significant impact 
Um, but you know, we we would expect that uh, most organizations end up somewhere between 70 and 90 percent of their customers being 100 percent digital. And uh, and that's in today's day and age, because again, everybody's dealing with a, a new normal. Uh, there's much more remote work. People realize that paper slows the process down. Cash flow is important. This is not a hard sell anymore. Um, change is happening in accounting, and um, the pandemic has made that really clear. So I think you know those you know 70 to 90 percent adoption is, is exactly what we would expect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Matt, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. For more information on Lockstep, check out our website at swktech.com and click on Anytime Collect under the AR Automation section in the Products tab. Thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day.